Around the world, the biggest brains in science and medicine are working round the clock to produce the one surefire way of halting the coronavirus, a vaccine. One of those big brains belongs to Professor Jonathan Ball, a molecular virologist at the University of Nottingham. His team are one of several UK-based researchers tackling the problem. Most famous are an Oxford University cohort whose vaccine is currently being tested in humans. I have a high degree of confidence about this vaccine because it's technology that I've used before. That certainly sounds promising. But what comes next? What are the major hurdles to developing a vaccine and how long might it take? I have no idea, but luckily Professor Ball does. The first thing is to um, identify a target for the immune system to focus on to give you protection. And with a virus that usually means the proteins of the virus that stick on the surface of it. Uh, and so in the case of the coronavirus we know that the, the virus has spikes on the surface. And so most of the vaccines will be focusing on trying to generate immunity to those surface spikes. And basically what you have then have to do is somehow deliver that spike into the body so that your immune cells can recognize it, make protective antibodies, which can then in the future when the virus or if they're exposed to the virus, latch onto the virus and kill it. Once you've, you've got that uh, spike identified, then you bolt it onto your vaccine platform. So the thing that you would deliver your vaccine with, in the case of the Oxford vaccine, that's a, a different virus called a chimpanzee adenovirus that normally causes uh, common colds. And so what they have is genetically modified a chimpanzee adenovirus to carry the coronavirus spike. Then when that's given to, to humans, they'll generate um, an antibody and hopefully that, that will result in protection. But the whole process of that is you would normally first uh, test it out in the laboratory to make sure that it produces the protein that you're interested in. You then test it in animals to see that it uh, does generate immunity, does generate these virus killing antibodies. And you'd also check it in animals to see if it was safe. And then once you were sure that it was both effective and safe in animals, you then move to uh, human trials. Once you're again sure that it's safe in humans, you can start to test to see how effective it is. And if you're sure that it's effective, then you can start to manufacture lots of it and, and hopefully market it as a vaccine. That all takes time. Usually you're talking several years for that whole process. But what we're seeing with the current uh, pandemic, the current outbreak, is they're trying to shrink a timeline that would take two or three years or even more into six months, nine months or a year. And so, so that's an incredible uh, rate of progress that you have to make. And therefore you have to ensure that some of these elements that you would normally do sequentially are actually overlapping. And of course that, that means that you're doing things like putting the vaccine into humans before you know for sure that it's safe in animals. Scientists working on the Oxford vaccine believe they will know if it works by early summer this year. Professor Ball is cautious of over-optimism. There are many dead ends researchers could hurtle into. We know that around the world there are lots and lots of different uh, vaccines currently being uh, um, trialled either in humans or in what we call preclinical stages. And any one of those vaccines might work, but unfortunately all of them might fail. The vaccine can actually fall at the first hurdle. It can be um, unsafe or it can show unacceptable adverse effects and therefore it fails. The, the next hurdle is to show that it actually can elicit immunity uh, so that it can produce uh, either virus killing cells or virus killing antibodies at the levels that you think will give protection if you uh, meet the virus in future. Even when you got past those first two hurdles, when you start to roll it out into much larger numbers, if it shows that either of those two parameters aren't met, then again, the vaccine can fail. So, how long? I think if everything went well, and um, so for example, the Oxford group are, are saying that they might have large numbers of doses, millions of doses by the autumn of this year. I think if everything goes well, then that's feasible. But I think the reality for the general population to have sufficient doses to cover, for example, 65 million people living in the United Kingdom, that will take a lot longer uh, because it still takes time to manufacture these vaccines. Uh, and therefore, I still think we're looking at a timeline that's greater than one year. But 
maybe by the next um, autumn or winter, we might have sufficient doses, if any of them are uh, successful, uh, to be able to treat those most at need. The more vaccine uh, candidates that are being trialled, there's a chance that more than one will be successful. And therefore, if more than one is successful, then you might be able to produce more batches of vaccine more quickly.